Hello, my friends. It's great to be able to talk to you again today, and uh, I'm coming on unshaven, no television makeup, just broadcasting because I feel like I've got like nine minutes uh, to say something that's very important, and five people watching. <laughs> no doubt the numbers will increase. <laughs> Share this with your friends, because I'm going to tell you exactly what I think is going on. Now, I might be completely mistaken. But I have had uncanny accuracy in some of these things. I'm going to tell you right now, I wrote about America unraveling. You could see it. If you're dyslexic, you can read it backwards. America unraveling, page 14. See that there? That's America. And then I wrote the unraveling. There it is. Look at that. The American, great American, it says the American unraveling. And here's what I said. Page... 14. America has four historic crucibles. The first crucible was the Revolutionary War. The second crucible was the Civil War. The third crucible was the Great Depression and World War II combined. And the fourth crucible is upon us. I'm going to read to you exactly what I wrote. We are already witnessing the first phase of the unraveling. Race wars, class wars, and then religious wars as Islamic terror incidents at home add to the combustion. Which mark you, since the day of Donald Trump has had a remarkable suppression in that category. And all of this is the intentional destabilizing prelude to the great economic reset. The great economic reset, written in 2015, published two months before Donald Trump was elected president. The trigger for this fourth crucible could come from any number of global incidents, but whatever the cause, it will most likely manifest in regional social upheavals. Remember those words. And national economic meltdown. National economic meltdown. Written in 2015, published in 2016, two months before Trump was elected during the Feast of Trumpets. It can be swift or it can be prolonged. It can be severe, it could be less severe. Much depends on the governing philosophy that enters the White House in 2016. This factor more than any other will shape America and the world for better or for worse. I thought for certain this meltdown was going to come after the next election. Therefore, I said it's not time to raise the panic. It's not time to get fanatic. Let's get Trump reelected. The Lord said, this people says it's not time. Haggai, chapter one. Haggai is the prophet that was sent to our generation, the Zerubbabels, the remnant, the sage cards the spiritually active, governmentally engaged conservatives, the 23 million that actually put Trump in office in five swing states, showing up with 170,000 votes, a mere little measly 170,000 votes out of 120 million, but it was like a remnant showing up at the right gates and shifting history. Now it's up to you, the remnant. My brothers and sisters, share this broadcast. I'm gonna say some things in the next few minutes that are, in my opinion, either very bad theology or revolutionary prophetic architecture. I said, how bad can it get? Heidi Baker, a respected global missionary, shared a vision she had while visiting a church in the United States, page 16, 2016, before Trump was elected. She said, I saw bread lines and soup kitchens and people wearing beautiful clothing, but the clothing wasn't worn out. I didn't want to see what I saw, but I saw what I saw was so undone. I said, Lord, what's going on? I saw people in um, four by fours and Lexuses and Mercedes Benz and BMWs and Toyotas. They were all with fancy, shiny cars, but they're standing in line. And she said, I heard the Lord say, suddenly. She also saw warriors that became warriors and then miracles of provision, miracles of supernatural provision, such as she's seen in Mozambique where food was multiplied and things were multiplied. I'm telling you something. Sometimes we write these things 
and don't even take seriously what we write. The Spirit of the Lord could be upon you and you're not even aware when you go back and look at it and say, oh my God, did I say that? Who wrote that? Oh, I did. Here's the proposition. The wrecking ball. God has decided he's going to hit America. But he's hitting the whole world. All the nations are like this. The question is, when the shaking stops, we'll change. Once these facts come out, if only the liberal press would admit the truth, but they can't say it. They can't say it because they're so obsessed like ravenous dogs, like, 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 um, like vampires. They have to feast on the blood of Donald Trump. He's their ritual sacrifice. And poor Donald. This man, watch, he loves this economy, he loves this country, he's a shepherd over the nation, he builds it up to the greatest, the greatest economic status it's, it's been in. And, and unemployment is radically reduced. And, and he just watches the whole thing collapse like a house of cards in front of him. And he's night and day and night and day, he's agonizing over how to solve this problem. And, and, and so some of the things that you even see him say that this is stuff, this is, this is I'll tell you what it's like, this has happened to me. I just don't have the scrutiny, and neither do you, that the whole world has with all the media dogs howling, <sighs> sniffing around, trying to find some salacious little tidbit of division and, 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 uh, and, and criticism they can, they can throw like a grenade into this man's backyard while he's laboring, probably sleeplessly laboring, holed up in that stinking place in the snake pit of Washington, listening to these people, Fauci, with this, everybody's a bit science. Listen, so I'm gonna get this scene from Nacho Libre. You are not a man of science, because science at this point is el succo. Science produced the virus. Science then miscalculated with Dr. Fauci, um, the seriousness of it, as far back as January and February. He said, it's not a problem here. And then science gave us the models that caused a panic attack. CNN, MSNBC, NBC, all these, ah, half of the world. And Gavin Newsom, 20 million Californians. And then uh, Cuomo's hair on fire, Cuomo. You tell me, Mr. President, who dies and who lives? I need 30,000 ventilators. What do we find out? Well, evidently, 6% of the population has this thing. Millions have it and didn't even know it. And we shut down and destroyed the world's strongest economy so that dictatorships could rise up. And you have American politicians and media people feeding off of it. Well, my goal is to edify you. So what is God doing? I'll tell you this. God saw it coming. Now the good news. Ready for the good news? Everybody say good news. What's good? God is in the shaking. So Haggai comes along and tells the people of Israel, you know what? I don't think you get it. I don't think you're on God's program. I think you guys are all doing your own thing. All you preachers out there are preaching, but you're looking at your business, your organization, your church, your fundraising, your TV show, your social media. Oh, you Christians out there, look at your 401ks, your jobs, seven mountains, even the seven mountain people, on the mountains, how are we gonna take the mountains? Everybody's, kind of, everybody's got their own little organization and we're gonna do it this way, we're gonna do it this way. Nothing gets done. The Lord says, how about this? pulls the plug economically, holds us up during Passover in our houses. What are we gonna do? Well, apart from Netflix and Zoom, what are you gonna do? So God now has taken the wrecking ball to the church. Wall Street, Broadway, academia, and not a moment too soon with academia. <clears throat> Even Congress won't go back. Anyway, the Lord says to Zerubbabel, he says to Zerubbabel, or Zerubbabel, and I'm gonna finish this. Zerubbabel's a governor. Why did he send a prophet to a governor? Because this move of God is a Melchizedek moment. I'm telling you, the shift is happening with the church. Why is there a government thing over my shoulder right now? Because the shift is happening in the church. Why over there do you see like George uh, Washington crossing the Delaware? Because it's government that is going to be and working in partnership with the church because the Melchizedek anointing is the seven mountain business, government, media, seven mountain anointing merged with the house of God. 
the true church of the living God, the true ecclesia that's here to advance the kingdom of God. And when these two come together, the priestly anointing and the, um, the kingly anointing, you're going to have a Melchizedek priesthood. It's going to be like Solomon. Remember Solomon? He, uh, he was in the temple and he offered the sacrifice. How dare a politician officiate at a sacrifice in the temple? Well, Solomon had the chutzpah to do it because he was a prototype of the Melchizedek priesthood or the kingly and priestly anointing coming together. God has taken a wrecking ball to the definition of church. It's still local church because the Bible says, neglect not the assembling of yourselves together and the rich and the poor should come together. It shouldn't all be just the elites over here in their own little club and poor people here. God, still the body of Christ, the local church is an absolute, is an absolute necessity, but no longer is it the only expression of the church that God's building. Why? Because the God's argument was, why aren't you building my house? God also talked about the local church. He wasn't talking about my TV ministry. He's talking about the living stones of God's people coming together to form something that never existed before, an ecclesia, a true ecclesia. We need the ecclesia in, God, in, in politics, in government. We need the ecclesia to take down academia. We need, the, we need these strong principalities and powers that are dictating and huffing and puffing up there on the tops of these mountains. We need to see them come down. And I believe God will do it, and he'll do this in regions of the United States. If he doesn't do it in the whole country, your region should be an example of what it looks like. Because God wants to have the ecclesia come in. What is the ecclesia? It is the governing apparatus of the kingdom of God within the sphere of of influence that God has assigned them. The governing apparatus of the kingdom of God within the sphere that is assigned to. And so in local government, it's local government. It's going to require the intercessors. It's going to require the Zerubbabels. And then it says, God goes to Zerubbabel, and then he goes to Joshua, the son of uh, the high priest. Meaning he goes to the preacher, and he goes to the government. And he says, I want some kingdom people in government, some kingdom people here uh, in the pulpit. I need you guys to get together and commiserate. And then with this prophet there, you have the prophet, you have the priest, you have the king, the prophet, the priest, the king. When they come together, there's an amalgamum, a chemistry, because we've got to see the new church arise and take on the gates of hell in the high places. Washington has its own, politics has its own principality. Media has its own princes and, uh, and, and business structures in the world have their own powers. And they're not just in the United States. They network like a big web, like a spider web all over the earth. But then the Lord comes down every now and then and wipes out that web. And, 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 and a nation like the United States comes along for 50 years or 70 years. And it establishes a degree of uh, equitable um, atmosphere for, for, for free trade and such. And then, then God help us if this country goes down. <sighs> because you're going to see the beast system come so fast. But I think it's God's will that America rise up. Why do I know that? Because the Lord went to Zerubbabel. He's coming to us right now and he's saying, you guys better get your act together. Consider your ways. I pray that you share this. I pray that this becomes the most viral broadcast I do. And if it's criticized, so be it. What they do is they got to build. Why is everyone who's running to build your enterprise and my house is lying in ruins, the Lord says. My house. I think God's house is the house of God that is supposed to be up in these mountains. And I think it's the house of God for nations. I think the house of God is for nations. I think the covering of the church is for nations, not just for the 400 people that are members. I think the church is the covering for nations. And that the church in your nation or in your city should be the, uh, the, the governing force policing the heavens and seeing God's will done on earth as it is in heaven, restraining the darkness. The Lord says, oh, because my house isn't being built, I decided to get your attention with an economic visitation. Well, everybody got the economic visitation. And then the Lord says, now if you'll obey my voice, I'm going to begin to awaken you. Everybody talks about the awakening, the awakening, the awakening, the awakening. Okay, who's awakening? And of course, we're going to default to revival meetings, preachers, and evangelism, because that's what every Christian does. Prayer, revival, and evangelism. By the way, preachers love that because, I mean, what fisherman doesn't want a net full of fish? But you see, uh, the building project God has is saving America, and America can go down so fast. That you're looking at it right now. You watch those laws change. You watch these tin horn sheriffs and these little dictators that are mayors, and they, suddenly they're, they've got authority they never had, and they start telling you, you can't go to churches in Essential. Why, well, you can go down there to that, uh, that, that restaurant, eat in your car. You can go down there, down there to Costco and get in line and go down, but you can't go to the parking lot and listen to your preacher. No, no, no. So you've seen this all over the country because that's the Antichrist spirit we're up against. Let's not empower that with the president, a senate, and a congress, and a supreme court that all agree. 
Because I'll tell you what, I've had people tell me that America is going to be the Babylon of the last days. And I said, I, I curse that in Jesus' name. It will not be. We will be a sheep nation. We will either be a small sheep nation or a mighty sheep nation. But we are not going to be the devil's instrument. So anyway, the uh, Zerubbabel, Joshua, and the remnant, the church, the businessman, and the remnant, the Bible says in verse 14 of Haggai, they were all stirred. The word stirred is awakened. Awakened. There's your awakening. There's your awakening. Is there a harvest? Of course there's harvest. But I'll tell you something right now. You get distracted with having a bunch of people getting saved. And you do not occupy the high places. Jesus says, after the wind is swept through. Oh, it looks like everything's in order. Oh, look, prayer might be back in the school. Oh, look, abortion's down in our state. But then seven more wicked spirits come in. What do you think Jesus is talking about? Seven more wicked spirits come into the house. And the last state of that house is worse than the first. So shall it be with this nation, he said. See, it's the seven mountains is spheres that are occupied by spirits. And don't get lost in the seven mountains. Some people don't, don't like that. It's just the fact that every nation has a government, an economy, an education, and a media, and an underground church. So at least five of them. Oh, wait, and there's always a family. And every nation is at the Olympics. So I guess there's some kind of arts and entertainment. The seven, seven are there, trust me, even in China. But the Lord says, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. This is the part I want you to catch. Then I'm off. Shaking the heavens means that God is judging the principalities over nations too. That means that right now if the church gets in its position, rather than going down, we can deliver some blows to these spirits and bam, we're going to see a breakthrough in the United States. But we're going to have to step into the arena. And I'm telling you right now, God's going to shake the heavens. He's shaking hell up right now. And hell is getting shaken in the hierarchy. And if we deliver the, the punches we're supposed to, we're going to see these strongholds coming down. We're going to see Cyrus's. What is a Cyrus? Cyrus is a secular ruler who is sent by God to protect God's people. But the Cyrus Trump cannot do what the church is called to do. And, and what you're seeing, when you see him say things that don't make any sense, it's because the guy's sleep deprived and, and going nuts in there trying to find a solution to get his country back again because he knows the danger we're in. Our economic power to control the world and to keep people behaving has been compromised now. That one weapon, better than guns, and now China's using it. China just threatened Australia. You better not be questioning about the Wuhan virus. You better not be questioning Europe. They made Europe change all their doc documents or we'll make you pay an economic price. Now they believe they're the new United States. And by the way, there are economists, leading economists in Israel that are not obviously Christian who believe China is going to do just that. And I break that in Jesus' name. Why? Because this is not the time. Satan is always eager. He's greedy. He's out of timing. Because the nations aren't ready yet. The church isn't ready yet. God, God gave us this president in the crucible. That's what I said. Trump will be there for the fourth turning. That's what I wrote. And it'll be an economic meltdown. I just thought it would happen in the second term. I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth and I'm going to overthrow kingdoms. I can show you in Isaiah where the Lord says, I'm going to shake the heavens and I'm going to, I'm going to overthrow kings. There's going to be political upheaval. But you know what? On the other hand, there's joy. I'll tell you why there's joy. Because what you gotta be looking for now is 40 days. It's 40 days. We've come out of our 40 days. We're in our 43rd day right now. It's 40 days. We've been out of the ark. 40 days. 40 days Goliath taunting. 40 days Jesus in the wilderness. 40 days Moses. It's a 40 days is the time and period of testing, separation, isolation. And now we've come through it. And I believe many of us have repented. What's repentance? It means you've had to change your priorities. And so there's new priorities. We're gonna tell you what's gonna happen. God is building the ecclesia and he's building it in your life. Some, some of you aren't called to go into the mountain and take on a mountain, but you're called to find the relationships that God is knitting you to that form for you a habitation for the Holy Spirit. What you must see now is that divine appointments are being arranged where people are gonna call you out of nowhere, you're gonna meet people. People are gonna come back to you from the past that, 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 that are gonna be new. There are new people that are gonna be meeting you, but there are some people that have been with you that are gonna be kind of like receding because we are a house of living stones and God is putting together in the midst of the local churches, he is also putting together functional groups of people like living stones that are forming these small groups because they met from house to house and then they gathered as a church and they frequently gathered as a church in the city and the city was like one big church. 
The secret is God is putting together Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. He is putting living stones in proximity so that we can become a habitation for his spirit. And when you bring in people into your life that have the spirit of God, that God has anointed and appointed to be in your life, those relationships create a holding tank for the creativity, the anointing, the authority of heaven. God reveals what he's doing and the authority comes down and you start to wield the scepter of authority within your domain. And God's gonna use you in the sphere that you're assigned. You say, where do I go, Lance? You start asking God for the key relationships right now, but you go forth, just like when Jericho's wall went down, you just went back where the wall, wherever the wall goes down, you go in. In Nehemiah, wherever they lived, they went to work on restoring that part of the wall. So where you are right now, the sphere you're in is exactly where you're supposed to be. Oh, Father, we pray that you will begin to be, make us a magnet. Just pray with me. I just want to be a magnet to your Holy Spirit. I want the lovers of Jesus, the bride of Christ. I want those that are seeking first the kingdom. I want the dangerous ones, the ones like David, the ones like Daniel, the ones like Joseph, the ones that can wreak havoc on the, on, on the purposes of hell, the ones that are delivered uh, from the hooks and snares of Jezebel and the love of money and other things. I pray for those to be drawn into my life, Lord, like a cosmic magnet. I pray that you will sanctify me so that I can be a, a source of your voice, your thoughts, your spirit to them. I pray that the relationships will come into proximity, the stones will come together, and that you're going to go to the quarry and bring out those great stones and put together a mighty temple. The Lord says, go up to the mountains and bring me wood. Haggai says, go up to the mountains and bring me wood. I believe God is building a house and he's building a house that can go on the high places of every mountain. For is it not written that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established at the top of the mountains? And so it shall be. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. If every, every curse, vex, hex, spell, every occult spirit, America is battling occult stuff like you wouldn't believe right now. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, you would send your angels with swords that will cut the cobwebs of the occult, the curses and the snares that have been set in spiritual places, the thrones and dominions that are over these regions and seas. We bind their influence. We ask you, Lord, to release your angels right now. Release your mighty angels. I believe that right now angels are coming to the houses of the saints. God is coming like a Passover. The blood on your doors causing that spirit of deception to pass over. And God is going to begin to give you a fortified witness. A fortified witness, which means when two or more gather together and they're hearing the same thing, the authority of their agreement goes through the ceiling. So may God give you the authority to hear what the spirit is saying. And then the joy. What is the joy? The joy is when you've got the Holy Ghost, my friend. I don't care what's going on out there. I don't care what's going on out there. 50 days after uh, the crucifixion of Jesus, the apostles and 120 people were in the upper room, all hiding out for fear of the Jews, all knowing that their leader was just publicly murdered and humiliated, all uh, concerned about what was going to happen, but then realizing he was risen from the dead. He had visited them. He had breathed on them. And so they just laid themselves out prostrate, completely dedicating themselves to the purpose of God, empty of all ego and empty of all self-confidence, empty of all boasting. They knew that without the endowment of power from on high, they could not do what they were called to do. And then... Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit came down like a rushing, like a tornado, like an F5 tornado. And the sound of that was so loud in the spirit realm that the entire city was hearing like, like tornado sirens going off. And, and, and they were drawn to the source of this amplifier of sound and they're coming fearfully. What is that? And then in the room, tongues of fire began to settle and, and they began to speak in other languages and God gave them the power to both hear and see and sense and speak speak by the authority of the Holy Spirit. And they went into an upgrade at that moment when they came out of that upper room, a few words spoken by Peter on the day of Pentecost pierced the hearts and they had suddenly a movement and God had gathered another 2,000 living stones and then another thousand living stones. Of course, you get some crazy stones and some rubble and some rolling stones, but you, you just live with the fact that the devil adds to you when God, when God adds to you. But then, the, the, but then the church of the living God was being formed. And I'm telling you right now, God wants to fill you with the Spirit because we are right now in the gap between Passover and Pentecost. Uh, it's now a 40-day window between Passover and Pentecost. I believe May 15th is going to be our Pentecost. And so between now and then, let's consecrate ourselves to this purpose that we will be filled with an endowment of power from on high, that God is going to unfold to us the secret of what he's doing, and that the shaking, shaking, shaking is not going to be for the destruction of the United States, but for the rising up of the ecclesia, the church of the living God. And I pray, oh, Maravoroso, I pray you feel that anointing right now. I pray the anointing comes in you right now, because I'm going to tell you something. Once you step into this new phase, 
it's going to be pressure. You think you've had pressure before because all the spirits at that level are gonna go, Ooh, who are you? They're gonna try to b -b 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 beat on you to get you to go back to your old level. They're gonna come at your head. They're gonna come at you. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have moments of anxiety, moments of uncertainty, moments of doubt, moments of, <clears throat> of vulnerability. And you're gonna say, Lord, am I still saved? What's wrong with me? I'm gonna tell you why that happens. Because when you go up to 30,000 feet in the spirit, your cabin has to be pressurized or it starts to pop and bolt. So what happens is clink, 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 clink. You're going to have those moments. And I'm telling you right now, remember these words. The Lord is by the anointing expanding your capacity to walk in the authority of your heavenly identity to fulfill the purpose that he gave you in the sphere of influence assigned to you. And when you show up and the spirits push back, you're going to push back in the spirit and you can maintain your joy, maintain your peace. And when necessary, you can exert your influence because your words are going to have power. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? You guys got to share this. I'm telling you. Because if I'm wrong, I'm very, very wrong. But if I'm right, I'm very, very right. We're in that chapter right now. And the joy comes because we're finally doing what we were born to do. We're finally doing the thing we're born to do. That's why I'm not listening to the news that much. I can only handle so much. So toxic, so, so irritating. But I get just enough to be able to be pinpoint accurate in terms of understanding the, the flow of current events. I'm telling you right now, nations are shaking, but we haven't yet seen who emerges from the shaking. I'm praying the United States is a check and a balance to China. And that in the world order, we have not been diminished to that because China is also taking a beating on this thing. And I pray that in China, there's going to be pressure, just like in North Korea, pressure on the suppression, the persecution, the cruelties inflicted upon people of faith, that God will take note of this and not let it expand, but that he will bring adjustment even there in China. So Lord, as nations, the dust hasn't settled yet. Have mercy on the United States. Oh God, for the sake of our sons and daughters, for the sake of the children, Grant us an extension of grace and give us bold, clear-headed leaders who can work as one. In Jesus' name. I must go. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, if you like this video today, you can help me out by leaving some comments and you know, you could vote up this video. Just give me a like sign and uh, click on like so that I know if this is working for you. And also share it with your friends because our entire movement is based upon people sharing ideas with other people. And if you want to be regularly notified about these broadcasts, then you want to subscribe so that you'll be able to get the latest material as soon as it comes out.